Hey, and welcome back to the Constantium Chronicles. I'm your host, Jack the Ripper, and in this episode you will see our wonderful laid-back style that I and Alpha Computer have made for ourselves on this quaint little mushroom island paradise. Watch us as we go to town on these trees and establish our homestead and fight off the elements to stave off our boredom a little longer. I tell you, having to actually play the game for a change is certainly a real change of pace. We were lucky to only have tools, armor, and a few minor accoutrements supplied to us by my contact from about a month ago. And it is with these that we shall make our homestead flourish. All the while, Alpha is getting used to utilizing hoes as an effective leaf whacker in this alien terrain of a mushroom island. Pretty soon this entire spot will be turned green and the island will transform dramatically. This legit lifestyle has breathed new life into Alpha and I's relationship as well. For a majority of the time Alpha and I have known each other, we've always had access to a stash or a surplus of items or a supply of some kind like that. Now, for the very first time in a long time, apart from the clothes on our back, we have none of that. The heck, the last time we worked together like this was nearly six years ago, just before the 11-11 do. Isn't it crazy how quickly time often seems to fly by? And speaking of time flying by, my, watch that complimentary shader's fueled sunrise shine. Chief among the Minecraft community's greatest accomplishments would have to be the beauty that shaders have brought now to the game. Simply breathtaking. Now, allow me to switch gears a little bit from the mundanity of survival and go and deal with the problem of establishing our home proper. This lava cast here will act as fodder for marking out the perfect square with which to start our building. Ha, look at me go. I'm like an army ant chomping away at a leaf for the sake of my future hive. Let's just take a moment to lay back and appreciate the mesmerizing nature of speed mining. Up and down, back and forth, side to side. No block is safe from my diligent destruction. Yes, a simple, happy little lava cast can be transformed into an instrument of ingenuity and beauty. With only a little bit of effort. Cobblestone is simple enough to get in larger quantities, but I wouldn't realize it at the time that lava casting itself is a much more time-consuming process than I had initially thought. Perhaps later, during future segments of tower building, I'll have uh, found another way to fill in those towers more completely, as ordinary lava casting is simply too tedious. The next major hurdle to clear is the land of all of its impediments like these giant mushrooms and their bovine brethren. Ah, lava. Yes, I will build my kingdom using lava, first and foremost. Yes, this box is looking just perfect for that purpose. You can see from these aerial shots the overall dimensions of this first tower will be large from ground level, but upon further completion of later towers, this one will pale in comparison to the overall complex. I seek for all the box towers to be completely solidly filled, with only rooms being carved out and hallways to connect them between. Maybe in addition I'll put some other farms or something else in between as well, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when I come to that. Oh, watch out Mr. Cow, it's dangerous down there. Being treated to a cascade of lava this quick really makes me wish it was this effective on the main server itself, but sadly, wishes do not fulfill dreams. Only hard work can. Now, we've skipped ahead a long ways into the future, for what you're seeing is the result of about a solid two weeks of effort gathering materials, concrete powder, items like gravel, sand, and so much more. Even the squid in the area were very generous for their donations. And rain, sleet, or shine, I have dedicated my time to completing the foundations for my very first tower. I even inadvertently have cooked myself a few times here and there, too. And if you're not careful while placing concrete powder, Constantium will kick you. I found this lesson out the hard way quite a few times. And so a simple back and forth pattern is more than enough to keep the pace at an even keel. I had to decimate all the beaches around the island to supply most of the sand for all this concrete powder. So I guess it's true what they say, uh, life is a beach and then you die your concrete powder. 
Now all that's left is to bore a few holes into the earth for beacons, and this cobble conglomeration of mine will slowly begin to feel like a genuine home base. The products of Alpha and I's efforts expended on all of those hours of breeding, leading, and treating with those villagers is finally now paying off in spades. Behold, the iron from the Iron Golem farm and the emeralds from many a trades have led to this first major beacon array being erected deep underground. I was very careful to measure just how far away the array's powers and effects would extend in order to maximize the land and placement of the beacons around the central tower. I didn't want to waste a single beacon or iron block in the cultivation of this place, after all. After a good chunk of time, you can see the concrete powder now lines the outside edges of the blocks. It's actually beginning to look like Exotic Bunny's original base design that I've lifted inspiration from, and the block palette as well. The base's simple shape stands proudly against the landscape below. The preparation of items is essential, and I've already begun hoarding a great deal many materials for the base in a few chests, which I plan to turn into a chest room at some point in the future, though making a large enough area for such a room is of a higher priority first. Ah, uh, just watch that lava ooze down into the central basin as I hurriedly place more concrete powder down below. I'll cement it all a little bit later when I finish the overall look I'm going for, but for now, watch me scamper to and fro. I find this method to be a little bit more efficient when it comes to not getting kicked from the server. If only Fast Place worked on Constantium as well. Living within such restrictions is far from the worst thing in the world, but it is still a minor inconvenience. As we can see, the inside of this cobble basin is filling in nicely, albeit a bit slow due to server lag. And now we can take a short dip down below to watch me scurry around placing more concrete powder. Man, look at me go, I'm like the Energizer Bunny, but for block laying. It truly is mesmerizing to see all of this hard work come to fruition right before our very eyes. What was once hours of real life effort now melts into mere moments flowing away for you all to enjoy. And speaking of enjoying my efforts, I've tried to give more polish to this series as of late, so give the like button some love as well as it helps me tremendously. And voila! A mere jump cut later and the entire body of the tower is finally finished and taking its proper shape, with only the sea lantern edging left to be completed. Sadly, I had to take a several days break from the build overall to complete a guardian farm separate from the base, which I was going to show footage of, but I realized that it would be too boring to matter. All the while I was building that, I did amass enough sea lanterns to be able to make it worth my while to complete. Ah, oh, to see those sea lanterns in their brilliant glow certainly fills my heart with joy. They really do an excellent job of defining the edges of any building made in this style. A style I shall now refer to as the Exotic Bunny style. That's exotic with the number 3 instead of the letter E on the front, after the name of the person who introduced it to me. My hope is for it to be as prolific as the Space Falc 3 style has become. My overall palette shall be polished deep slate, deep slate tiles, concrete, and sea lanterns. We'll just have to wait and see how everything pans out, though. I ended up having to move my setup exactly one block upward in order to accommodate the new concrete layer. And speaking of concrete, look at these solid, smooth walls. Having finished up placing all the sides, I've already poured water over the edge to round out and cement everything in place, giving it that crisp, clean look that concrete brings to every build. And here we are reaching completion of the very first tower. The hole in the center is now very shallow and the top is receiving its final finishing touches on the concrete cap. All that's left to do is pour a little bit more of that spicy nacho cheese in place. And all in all, it took nearly three weeks to reach this level of detailing. But finally, all this hard work has paid off, and in a big way too. As the sun sets on this leg of the project, let us gaze up at our handiwork and drink in the sights. Look at that brilliant blue sky, which my monument stands in stark contrast to. And with all that, I must bid you all farewell. Stay tuned for more Constantium Chronicles. Leave a comment down below telling me if you like the overall direction the series is taking. And subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok, and join our Discord all linked down below if you'd like. And if you want to chat, I'm always available. Take care, and have a good one. Bye.